In this video I'm going to show you how to um, use the Node-RED script to uh, fine tune your color tracking values in your for use in your L2 color tr target code uh, or any other color tracking applications you may use this for. So um, firstly we're going to have to import our Node-RED flow. So uh, if you go to github.com slash mxat slash scuttle and you click on software um, Node-RED and then node-red color tracking.json and then raw you can uh, highlight all of this uh, or control a and then copy it and now we will go to our node-red on our beagle bone so I'm connected to my beagle bones Wi-Fi so if you go to 192.168.8.1 colon 1880 for node-red um, you'll have this node-red page load up um, sometimes it can take up to like 10 seconds so give it a moment um, so we'll go to this hot dog bar on the top left or on the top right corner. Import clipboard and then paste uh, what we grabbed from this page into here. And then I'm just going to keep it as current flow um, because uh, my current flow is empty. And then we'll do import. And um, you'll see this other tab will pop up. If you click on that, this is the flow that we just imported. Um, now that this flow is here, we can click deploy. And then we can click this uh, little uh, bar graph icon that uh, when you hover over it, it says dashboard. Click on that, and then you see this little box with an arrow coming out of it. You click that, and it'll take us to our UI. So uh, on this page, we have three boxes, stream, values, and color sliders. Uh, the stream right now is not working because we have some code that we're going to start in next to make that work. Um, but we also have um, these, uh, so there's supposed to be six values here three zeros and 255, 255, 255. If we just take the slider and slide it around and then back to zero, you'll have a zero pop up there. We want to keep those at zero. Um, so yeah, you want to keep these first three at zero. Now, the last three are fine at 255, 255, 255. Um, so we're going to go to our Cloud9 for our scuttle. So 192.168.8.1 colon 3000. And we have, I have the Scuttle um, repository copied to my uh, Cloud9 folder. So if I go to Scuttle, Software, Basics, and then Computer Vision, um, you can see we have this uh, run.sh. So actually, we need to go here. I'm already there in this little thing, but you should know how to move to those directories. Um, we can run the command bash run uh, well you can see ls we have the same files as they're there so if you run the command bash run.sh um, and you give it a couple moments uh, it should take some time oh, that one went a little quicker but um, yeah after this your stream should work alright so now we're probably streaming to our page but I want to quickly talk about this correct corrupt JPEG data. Um, this error is actually not a problem because it actually does not uh, it doesn't affect any of the code. Um, your code's still working, it's just still throwing this error. Um, so nothing is broken, it's just uh, this is an issue with OpenCV using certain types of cameras. If you're using a Logic, Logitech camera like I am, um, then this is an issue. The Microsoft cameras do not have this issue. Uh, the issue is not with the cameras, it's with the OpenCV library. But uh, once again, this code is this um, error is actually like it's more of an annoyance than anything because it's not actually there's y y all the code is still working. The code is running, and uh, if we go back to our no red page and we refresh it, we'll see a video stream now on this side. So everything's still working. You can ignore this error. So um, on this node red page, we have our video stream. If I put my cam my hand in front of the camera, you can see my hands there. Um, I'm not quite sure why these lines have showed up, but uh, you can ignore them. The there are uh, three other, so three total windows: original, which is you know your camera view, the threshold, the mask, and as you'll play with these sliders, you'll see what they are. So uh, I have grabbed the nearest uh, an object to color track. It's a yellow sponge. So I'm going to put this in my frame, and uh, I'll keep these there. So I want to focus on, on this yellow square. I guess it's a diamond in that orientation. Um, but if I slide these sliders around, 
Okay, so I've slided the I slid the first slider up, and we can see. So we're, we're trying to right now constrict our color value range, so that we keep this yellow square and only the yellow square. So you can see here now, my yellow square is black in this threshold and also the mask. But we're only focusing on original and threshold at the moment. So the threshold is in has you know there's white and there's a black square. That actually means I've excluded that color, the color of the, what, that I want to keep, which means I've gone the wrong way. You want to make sure the object you're trying to track always stays white. So let's move this back down. Okay, so that, that seems good. Now we're back to a, a white square. So now we can move up the next value and just tinker with these values until you get the tracking that you want. So see, here we're getting um, part of the object, which is not what we want, so we want to always keep the entire object in the frame or in the uh, view. Uh, and we were filtered out a bunch of other colors. So let's keep going. It's too far. Okay, right there seems good. If I, um, okay, see if I put my hand over there, my shadow casts enough of a, uh, I cast enough of a shadow on the sponge to cause a color change great enough for the color tracking code to now exclude that color. So you need to be aware of that. So this is a very slight color change that you might be able to see in the camera, but it's enough that it no longer sees this color. I kind of want to keep that. I don't want my color range to be that narrow. So I'm going to bring down that. Okay. So if you're at this point and you still see like other objects in the background, it's really not a big deal. You know, all objects have to be a certain size for to track them. You can see that other objects that are white are not large enough to be tracked, but also we still have to tune our max values. So we can bring down these values um, really until, as long as our object stays in there, we're fine. So, okay, maybe I'll keep that there. Okay, it's too far. Um, okay, right there seems good. Uh, okay, so I think uh, that looks good. Um, we have my object in the frame. There's some other stuff, but they get filtered out from those hacko irons. Um, it's good to maybe play with the object just to see that, you know, you still keep the object no matter what, you know, uh, here the object gets bright enough from the light that I don't see it anymore, but uh, I'm actually fine with that. But you can tune your filter so that it uh, works a little different. Alright, so that's, uh, now we've tuned, we've figured out our colors that we want to use in our code, so we can highlight these and copy them. And uh, we're going to now use this in our L2 color tar color target.py program. Uh, and I'll write up an example. So if we go to our Cloud9, this program, um, actually, so first let me create in um, basics a new file. I'll just call this example.py. Oops. And we'll paste our values into there. See, I have six values. And uh, once you've pasted those, you can kill this program with control C and uh, this video stream will stop working. You have to stop this otherwise you can't have two programs running uh, capturing from the camera at the same time. But uh, now that we have these values we should be able to just close that. So um, we're going to be using the L2 color tracking color target.py and uh, if we um, that kind of cloud nine kind of breaks that. Let me just close that again. Okay, right, so this is our L2 color target py, and we have this color target um, function here that takes in the color range, and we're gonna in here we're gonna put our color range um, in in our own file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna we can just ignore these numbers down here for a moment, but we have to keep them somewhere. Let's import L2 color target. Um, and I'm going to do this as import it as CT. So um, then we can uh, define our color range as um, you can call it color range. Maybe HSV range is more um, specific. Uh, HSV range, and then we're going to do two li uh, two tuples, and, or you know these little parentheses object inside of this larger one. And in our first one, we're going to put our minimum values, which is 19, uh, 83, and 151. And then the second one, we'll put 33, 158, and 228. Okay, I can delete this. 
Let me make sure I have the right values in there. 1983, yeah, so um, I can now delete that. So um, now I'm just going to create a while loop, while one, and then um, we're going to we want to now get the uh, coordinates of the the color track object that we're tracking uh, into our um, program. So actually, um, before I do this, let me let me run our Node Red program again, and uh, we can see. Uh, if I refresh this page, once our camera starts up, um, we'll be able to just grab the uh, location of the, the object in our frame. So, oops, uh, let's refresh this. Uh, you can see right now it has the coordinates 85, 105, 84. It's kind of um, moving around, but um, don't not don't move the camera or the object because we want to kind of use these values to confirm that our filter is working properly. So 85, 105, we'll kind of just uh, remember that. So I'm going to go back here, stop this. Um, so we're going to do, uh, we want to use that color tracking function. So it's ct dot uh, color uh, tracking. Let me make sure I have that correct. Uh, sorry, so it's color, color target. target and then we're going to do uh, we're passing it our HSV range and then I want to store this into uh, I'm going to say object location object loc so um, now we're going to get that back and I'll also just import uh, time and then we'll tell this thing to time dot sleep for like 0.1 seconds um, and then we'll also print object location. So object location uh, or this uh, color target function is going to return two things or an x and y coordinate as well as a uh, radius of the object. So um, that radius will tell us how much how large the object is on our frame. So now that I've saved that I can do python3 color oops I need to go up one folder and uh, python3 color target example.py and if I run that uh, it should output to the terminal. It'll all, unfortunately also print the error that um, that uh, corrupt JPEG data er issue uh, but we're going to just ignore that. Uh, there's really not a way to suppress that either but um, we'll just ignore it. Anyways, so you can see we're getting in I'm just going to stop it now just so that I can read it. Uh, 85 and 105, this is our x value and our y value that matches with what we saw in our node red. Oh, this is actually frozen, it's not running um, because I stopped the program, but you can still see what before we stopped the camera it was at 85 and 105. So that tells us that our color tracking code is working properly and that we put in um, values that work. I'm going to start this program again and I'm actually going to move the object around. Um, so once that program starts, let me uh, make this window a little larger. So I'm going to move it to the right here, and you can see it has um, its values have changed accordingly. It's on the same plane, so its x value is not going to change that much. And I've moved it all the way to the left now, and we're getting that. And if I actually remove this object from the frame, we're going to get on our x and y, we're going to get nuns because our object is no longer in the frame instead of like a zero zero, because um, technically an object can exist at x zero and y zero, but if I returned a zeros when the object doesn't exist in the frame, that would be um, false because the, that would that wouldn't be true because the object does not exist in the frame. So it's none and then the last ver uh, value that it's returning is a radius and in this case it's zero because we don't see the object. So I'm going to put the object back in the frame and um, lastly I can move the object close to the camera and you can see the radius increases and I can move it further away from the camera and you can see that it is decreased. So now we have that's our color tracking code. So um, that's how you uh, use these values to tune your uh, color tracking. Um, so 